Things, some new breaking news coming in from Michigan here, and I want to pop up uh, this full screen for you. You can see uh, the photos of all of the men. You might recognize them. The historic Gretchen Whitmer kidnap plot case ending with no convictions. Defendant Daniel Harris, the only one who testified at trial, was acquitted on all four counts with the judge telling the 24-year-old uh, Lake Orion man that he would go free this afternoon. Brandon Caserta, you can see him, 33 years old, of Canton. He was acquitted on the only count that he faced, kidnapping conspiracy. He's also going to be re released today after serving more than 18 months in jail. The jury deadlocked on charges against Adam Fox and Barry Croft, so a mistrial was declared for both of those defendants. We got some reaction outside of the courtroom a little bit earlier today. Let's take a listen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right from the beginning, I kept looking for it. I mean, we had volumes and hundreds and thousands of hours of recordings, and it wasn't there. We kept looking for it. When did he agree? He never did. So why did they go after him? What's your take on that? My take is they needed somebody to accompany Fox because Fox is a joke by himself, so they needed the Wolverine watchman to give it credibility. That's why they were pulling them together. So it, uh, yeah. Does like, what does this show? Feel? Did he say something? Would he, would he have an instant reaction with you? What did he say? Oh, um, he, we just, you know, we kind of skirted you guys and went down the street. So Brandon's he was just, gone. He's gone. He's gone. He, oh yeah. He's yeah. Gone. He's, he's, going home. he's already out. He's, he's, going. he's out. He's, he's gone. Talk to us? Yeah. Uh, not right now. He's just enjoying a walk <laughs> down a sidewalk right now. I mean, is that's a big birthday? deal when I you've heard, got... I heard them say happy 10. birthday. It is his birthday. Best birthday present, you know, imaginable. So I'm very happy for Brandon. Um, you know, I don't know what the government's going to do with uh, Fox and Croft, but, you know, this, to me, this was a signal. You know, a rogue FBI agent, you know, trying to line his own pockets with his own cybersecurity company and then pushing the, the conspiracy that just never was. Never was, never was going to be. Our governor was never in any danger. And uh, I think the jury, even though they didn't get all of it, uh, you know, they smelled enough of it. So, Were you at any point shocked by what you heard, though, in that courtroom? Hey, you when? Before, but well, you about what? Any of the wire recordings at all. About, well, I'm sorry, about what? Were you shocked when you initially heard some of those recordings? Um... No, I mean that but they do it all the time. There are lots of recordings. They wire themselves up and go in. So no, I wasn't shot. Could, could do you know if they were hung on whether Fox and Croft were not guilty? I mean, were they like leaning toward not guilty? Did they, have you heard anything about that from the jury? No. Sometimes you can talk to the talk to the jury afterwards. The judge gives them that option. He gives them our phone numbers, and we're not really allowed to reach out to them. So I, I have no idea what their deliberations were. So what, what would you, you ask the Franks jury? and uh, Garbin? Pled guilty, and they're going away. Yeah, for, well, uh, Garvin, I think, pled too soon. He didn't. He didn't uh, get get to see the discovery and how, um, what a predator Dan Chapel was, and what a predator um, Jason Chambers was to these folks. So he didn't. He didn't get it. Now Frank's, Frank's got. I believe Frank's got scared, and rightfully so. I mean, he's facing life in prison, right? And if he gets a Garvin deal, he's out in, you know, six, then he comes up here, he gets a little more time out, maybe it's three. It's a hell of an incentive. I mean, a hell of an incentive when you're standing there facing life and you don't know the government's going to bring the full force, you know, of, uh, of the federal government down on your head. That's a hell of a thing. So what's the bottom you know? line message to the FBI you think that the jury sent? Let it go. Go away. And, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't think... I don't know. It's up to them. Do you have anything to say to the prosecutors? No, the prosecutors did a heck of a job. I mean, you know, with what they had, I think they, they did a good job. They marched forward and, um, you know, there was controversy after controversy came up in this case. And, uh, you know, they, Mr. Kessler just kept marching forward. He did his job. He did a good job. He but did an you, excellent job. Do you think they have a weak case and they should proceed with these two guys? I think what the FBI did is unconscionable, is what I think. And I think the jury just sent them a message loud and clear that these tactics are not going to be, you know, we're not going to condone what they've done here. And, that, and the jury didn't get all of it either. You know, the, you know, the, the judge kept uh, quite a bit out in pretrial rulings, so, but they did get enough of it, I think. We heard some very rough talk 
about the governor during the sure. trial. Sure. And uh, should people not be so concerned about that at all? What should people take away from, from what your client and others are talking we about? We have the freedom to say that. If I don't like the governor and it's rough talk, I can do that in our country. That's what's beautiful about this country. That's what's great about it. Um, so, no, I, I think that's fine. One of our witnesses, because we had a parade of 5A witnesses, right, Fifth Amendment, where I'm not going to testify, one of them was going to come in and say, I've heard worse from pregnant mothers up on the Capitol, you know. So, no, it didn't shock him, didn't shock me, you know. So, you no, know, hoorah, good, you know, freedom in America. It's still, it's still here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very Thanks, much. Sir. Uh -oh. So back out to the courthouse, uh, the jury returning in three hours with, with its partial verdicts today. They spent three weeks listening to testimony about these, how these four men uh, bonded over social media, venting about government controlling their lives, and then came together through a group called the Wolverine Watchmen. It's a self-proclaimed Michigan militia that wanted to spark a, sec a second civil war and use the, uh, the Whitmer kidnap as a starting point. Speaking of Governor Whitmer, we are getting reaction from the governor's office here. I want to read it out for you. It says today, Michiganders and Americans, especially our children, are living through the normalization of political violence. The plot to kidnap and kill a governor may seem like an anomaly but we must be honest about what it really is. The result of violent, divisive rhetoric that is also uh, all too common across our country. There must be accountability and consequences for those who commit heinous crimes. Without accountability, extremists will be emboldened. The governor remains focused on her work on behalf of Michigan and all the Michiganders. This includes addressing violence and threats to our democracy. We appreciate the prosecutors and law enforcement officers for their work on this. So uh, that's the latest that we have. Again, uh, two mistrials for two of the suspects, two suspects found not guilty today in court. And we are also uh, awaiting possibly a press conference. This is outside of the courthouse as our team is, is still out there. Uh, so we'll uh, bring you any details as we have them. If anyone comes up and speaks, if we hear any more from the governor's office out in Michigan, we've got you covered. We'll be back here in two minutes.